Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Masters of Code, our series wherein we talk to technologists about technology and everything around it. I'm your host Alok Soni and today we have with us Sandeepan Chattopadhyay, a very dear friend and Sandeepan is the founder of Zelfmog. Previously he was CTO of Just Style. Uh, Sandeepan, really glad to have you uh, on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, so Sandeepan, today we're going to talk about Tech for Impact, a topic which is very close to your heart. Uh, I understand that and, and I'm really glad that you're having this conversation. But before we get on to the questions and answers, I really want to understand a bit about what you have been up to you know, in the last uh, couple of years or so. What are you working on right now and what interests you? So as you know that after Jazzal, I formed Zelpmok. Uh, which you know that we are, we are it's, it's complex, well backwards. So we are trying to simplify things. And uh, the strategy and the focus was to make sure that we serve the next 500 million Indians. We'll talk in more detail about what that means and all. But overall, it's essentially bringing a range of services to the have-nots to make sure that there's some parity in society between the haves and the have-nots on a technological plane. This has nothing to do with only economics, it could be economics, it could be cultural, it could be literacy, but how do you make sure there's an equal access to technology uh, for the masses onto that part? So we have been deeply working on what we call the heel sectors, health, education, agriculture, and livelihood. And also as a second part, you know, many corporates who are serving that sector are often not uh, very equipped to sort of absorb innovation. So we help with that process also by making sure that we are acting like a solution architect for them and making sure they're able to absorb innovation. Maybe the, you know, the, the solution they need needs four or five innovations, but putting it together, making sure they're the top of the tech onto that part is there. So overall, the whole vision is that can we make sure that, that uh, we are able to make frugal, uh, required and best fit technology, which can cater to the masses at, 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 at scale. So that's the main part of it. Some of our startups have done us pretty proud. Um, like Mihoop, which we had talked of. You remember that speech and all. We were saying, how, why to start deep tech and all. But you know, it's been just five years. We are already in every Tata car. So every Tata passenger car shipping out today, uh, we have been able to replace things and we are giving much more accurate for vernacular speech and text conversa speech conversation between the car and the passenger, the car and the driver. And, and this was unique in India because you may drive a Mercedes, but your driver doesn't speak English most of the time. So you needed to have wonderful support even for the costliest cars. I mean, that was a space we saw. The same technology is being used by call centers for other things. Essentially, can we think of a world, dream of a world where your voice is your keyboard and literacy is not a barrier to using technology? Um, I mean, this, this is obviously the common theme that how do you make sure people move on from being content consumers to compute users? That needs two purposes. You need to have a, an application really need. And second is you should feel at ease in using it. Then only you will be looking at that. So we are up to the same things uh, as we always. And yes, we got listed about three years back. That's also another uh, reason why we, we had the vision because we also feel that the funding of, of our requirements, core requirements will never be understood by anyone outside the domicile. And hence, the domicile people have to step up. But there is no instrumentation for that. We think we'll give a vehicle for those sort of aspirations to prosper. So thanks thanks for that, uh, Sandeepan. Uh, you know, I was saying that in, in, in last uh, 15 years, what I have seen that the definition of technology for impact has changed and has evolved with time, right? There was a time when uh, people used to see technology for impact as more from the not-for-profit sector. And it could be because what was highlighted, but uh, what do you think exactly is today the definition of technology for impact? What does it entail uh, according to you? So definitions are more dependent on mass communication elements to it. And, uh, you know, but the intent of impact of technology has not changed. Like the examples that come to my mind is that Amul was always not exactly an NGO, but it was a technology for impact. And the technology is just not your uh, keyboard technology. It's about milk pasteurization. It's about product making, uh, making sure that you're able to democratize milk quality tests. That's also technology. 
transporting milk in uh, railway networks which doesn't have electricity support how do you keep them vacuum sealed how do you make sure that you you do something as elaborate but it was always there or a simple example of empowerment or really impact in technologies the indian railway reservation system now that doesn't really it's not an ngo project at all but please remember that impact essentially makes sure that you are giving the basic essence of democracy democracy is not about making sure that everyone has equal rights that will be unfair that will kill innovation but democracy is making sure that everyone has equal access to right and if technology is a tool or an expansion or an augmentation to yourself you have to make sure that it is spread across everything now naturally because of economics it will always first sort of pool itself around the top spenders but then how do you create that propagation on to the masses to make sure that their life their overall contribution their spending power their power of choice increases that's what makes it like impact so in, in many ways it's like the physics equivalent of impulsive force you cannot throw a golf ball no matter how much strong armed you are unless you use the club and the reason you use the club is the club is the medium by which you can create the impulsive force though your strength your everything is same but because of using that instrumentation you are able to create a huge amount of force in a short amount of time which makes you hit that far right so imagine that is what is happening you are letting everyone hit the golf ball and you are giving a club to everyone so if you ask a small boy that you throw the ball and you ask a guy with a club golf club to hit the ball of course the guy the, the small boy or the poor guy is going to lose every time give them all for all the golf club tell them the basics of how to use it who knows some of them may beat that rich guy that's the whole point of it but overall it is all about elevating the standard of life making sure their rights to basic norm is there yes it, it will change with time because the what is a minimal accepted part of it will change with time 30 years back when most middle class didn't have cars thinking of a a person to afford a taxi ride at a fair price was itself inconceivable but now that the whole middle class has moved the overall economic part has shifted the lower part also should be dragged up and that's why innovation happens so impact could be anywhere it doesn't need to be an impact sector a uh, impact sector or impact technology need not be same you can have impacting technology in any sector but there are certain sectors where the state responsibility lies which are of course at the cusp of both of these aspects you need to have impact technology and they do impact life things like education health these are basics right right to food right to uh, freedom whatever it is in, in an expression for example twitter is a big impact your your social media is an impact i mean it has its own own flaws but like asimov says that if if criminals are the price we have to pay for geniuses i demand we pay it there is always going to be a refrain but you cannot or i cannot deny the fact that we have been able to democratize reporting we have been able to democratize people's access to bring out problems which otherwise would have been missed you cannot deny that this small instrument we hold in our hand the mobile phone has made everyone a photographer that's impact correct uh, i i think i agree to an extent to that uh, okay not just technology for impact for anything in general you need resources right yeah. and and i have been talking to a lot of people struggling to hire talent and retain talent yeah uh, and to have larger impact you need more and more dedicated people working in the domain in whatever that is so when yeah. you talk about uh, you know technology uh, for impact what we are talking about how do you manage today to hire and retain talent and because look people are giving super bikes and insane amount of salary and it, and it just sometimes it doesn't even you know uh, feel i mean you have to put something reasonable out there but at the same yeah. time you know that the job has to be done and you cannot be fine not having or not being out in the market getting those people so how do you do that uh, when you're working uh, in technology so i will, I will give an anecdotal experience first and then i'll explain that it's not a single silver bullet it's an array of arrangements you do which makes it there and again you know i mean i i've discussed with you in, in different forums this belief of mine that i do believe people don't work for money they work for respect they actually work for impact right in the absence of those two or the clarity of those two money becomes a representation of that 
That's when they run for money. So for example, I consider just that to be a very impactful software we built. We made the normal MSMEs have a right to be presented, a right to market and reach customers, which no branding to, could take away from them, correct? But my techies were not poor chaps. They came together for ideology, but they became rich. Probably the ESOP plan that we had gave a lot of wealth from a very, very low of the bottom of the pyramid to top of the pyramid, equal share in banks. I guess that's what we did. We gave respect to each individual. And that's why we could build great teams. We said that we will share based on the contribution you're making. I'm not paying them high salary and not robbing them of the wealth that I'm creating. I'm asking them to be a participant to the same risk. That's what I did. I guess that's what happens. There is, a, and we have economic, you know, we have, we have demographic dividends. There is always that amount of people and quite a sizable chunk. Think of the amount of people working in NGOs, bright guys. Why are they doing it? There is always enough amount of people, but they are not aware that the recruiter is actually sincere. When you stand up and you prove your sincerity and they know that you mean it, they will rally around you. Mission matters. Think of the kind of technical talent which no Western people could buy rallied around to create an Aadhaar system. Why did we do it? So if you, if you articulate it better, if you stand up for what you mean and you're not faffing around, you're not, you're not promising bikes, but you're promising the fact that we will get a moped to every villager, there will be a different class of people who will be interested. And trust me, that's the class which can make this solution. Because skills cannot make impact technology work. Skill will say, how do I work? How do I do this in my skill? Whereas an impact technology would find first thing, what is the right technology to use for this? They start from a very different plane. They start from a solution end only, not from showing off their skills. They want to show their impact. But 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 sorry to just cut you, but but do you no, no, don't please. you think uh, but don't you think that this certainly means and refers to slightly experienced folks. So versus freshers, right? Because when you're just straight out of college and I'm talking about those developers versus people who have spent, let's say, close to five years or so. So don't you think yeah. what you're saying makes more sense? And, and it kind of also refers to the class of those people who are slightly more experienced rather it than is. the freshers. It is. So you are right. This is where the part is. And that, that's also true for innovation. Innovation, if you spread it across or the innovation capacity has been observed to be a U-shaped curve. Either the very inexperienced or the people who have got a little bit of a, a stability and they are not working for money. They are the ones who keep on focusing on that. The middle part does miss out. There are always exceptions. But in general, the kind of people who will come in will be a U-shaped curve. People who are on their first jobs, who are looking at adventure, they have some part, they may not be sold to the idea for life. And then there are people who have sort of stabilized themselves, settled down in life, who really want to come and create an impact. Now, a good ratio of this is what makes a good impactful team. Got it. I think I'm going to talk about uh, the second part of, in a later part of this conversation, wherein what kind of people actually are able to build more legacies, better legacies. Uh, but right. before that, let's talk about the sectors. I mean, uh, in while answering the first question, you did mention about some of the sectors which are slightly more uh, influenced and in which which have a larger role to play, where in technology for impact is a larger role to play. So right. which are those, some of those sectors? Let's take a deep dive into it. And some of the examples, if you know, you can take like, I know that there are some usual suspects, but at the same time, in, in my opinion, for example, I'll consider an academy a technology for impact startup because if through that somebody who previously couldn't afford or you know couldn't get access to something is able to get it uh, at the Correct. comfort of sitting there, then similarly a lot of fintech companies as well, right? So, so what are some of those domains and some of those companies which are slightly unusual suspects, which in your mind are there? I guess sometimes we take a lot of things for granted also. So, for example, for me. The jams stack that we have built as India is a huge, often not mentioned, but it is the basis and the backbone on which impact sector is flourishing. The fastest company to reach a billion subscribers are not Facebook. It was Reliance Geo. And it could not do it had it not linked itself to Aadhaar. So somewhere the rails are to be very, very well admired. And I think we have done a fantastic job there. 
Forget all the political hullabula and all. I think it was the right thing for India. Correct. Then payments. Absolutely. You're right. The fact that, and again, remember, what did the bridge with the QR code? Illiteracy. They Everyone can mug up numbers because that's only 10. And they are intuitively aligned to it because that's something that you practically do in life, counting money. They can align to that. And there was no other complexity. It's a two-screen process. Simplifying payment to that and still giving the stability was a huge step. Now, there are many other things which are surrogate technologies which people don't realize. Like, what if networks have fall, fail? What happens? How do I reclaim? I think we have done a fantastic job, much better than anywhere else, because then it faced those problems of reconciliation management, faith building, even in those technologies. We have done a marvelous job. I think one of the biggest impact technologies in India has been WhatsApp or the messaging applications, right? And if you look at it, it's mostly a recirculation. It has its problems. You Every good thing has a bad thing. But what did it give? It gave, so what are the main things that we're talking of? Somewhere, someone creating an identity benchmark. Someone creating a payment benchmark, right? Someone creating an expression benchmark, communication. The fact that I can express myself. Same goes for YouTube. How many unknown bands have found some attraction or some part of it. It's there. How many people, a skilled worker has been able to show off that this is a kind of table I can make and got so many orders. Your e-commerce players, everyone has created impact. They have tapped onto and given equal access to success. Any platform which has done that has caused an impact. And in India, that scope was huge. So anyone at some scale, knowingly or unknowingly has created impact. That's the beauty of us. We had so little that anything is something. I think technically anybody who's building for 100 million or more Indians, they Absolutely. are working. I'll tell you something. Anyone who has more than a lakh concurrent users a day or, or a lakh daily users is creating impact. It's a very simple measure. Got it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, all right, let's talk about challenges faced by the techies who are building technology for impact. Um, and uh, I know that now you're also dealing a lot on the business side of the things, but still at heart, you're a techie. So tell me, you know, not, not just at a very high level, but also, you know, day to day, there will be people who are building and shipping products in these domains. What are some of the top challenges? Is it, uh, and then look, it could be like you mentioned with respect to Zelfmark also that you knew that uh, a lot of people are not going to understand and you want uh, you want to go out to the public and people who are based out of India too. Right? Yeah. So, so similarly, uh, is it lack of funding? Is it uh, regulation? Because a lot of time, like fintech sector, is dealing with regulations yeah. all the time. Because whenever you are kind of talking to masses, then the regulatory frameworks and things come into play because government also has to shield, like you said, True. these people. True. Somewhere it's responsibility and somewhere it's bureaucracy, both the things. Absolutely. Uh, so, so what are some of those challenges which as a techie you kind of go through uh, while building? See, ultimately, impact is all about momentum change, right? And momentum in every sphere of influence, correct? Yes, these are all problems, but they're also getting solved. Like six, seven years back when you and I were talking of these problem areas. I mean, the problem is that people are willing to invest in things they understand. Or on people they have full faith in. Correct. Now, if you understand most of our investment is coming, not internally, but overseas or managed overseas, how do you expect them to understand problems which are indigenous to us? As long as they have a comp in the West or at least in China, they can appreciate. It's an Excel sheet calculation. If China is A, India is B, if it's done C in China, it's, it's a ratio proportion. But going from fundamental level and all is there. So I think two things happened. That initially, most of this, uh, the VC industry was maturing. And like I like to say, most of them were accounting and banking. They were still taking the templates from the West. But now we really see a class of capitalists coming. Capitalists take risk on innovation. That has surely increased. You see Omnivore, you see people like that. You see Dihard getting funded. But they all went through the trough of, you know, proving themselves for four or five years. Still, they reached the traction. The problem is in the seed funding. 
If you execute properly, India never has a demand side problem. It has a supply side problem. Now, this is where the vicious cycle comes. No one believes you, no one funds you. So you don't build a great team. Without the bread team, you do a jugar. It works to some, but doesn't scale. Then everyone comes and says, see, I told you, it's a vicious cycle. Correct? I think somewhere we are getting out of it. Models like ours is emerging. I know of at least seven, eight companies who are following the model that we have done. And that's what I take pride in. It's, it's impossible that we set faith systems. We set models. And it's, 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 there's enough for everyone. There's no need to be competitive. Collaborating is important, right? Now coming back to your question, regulation, yes, there are challenges when you hear it, right? I don't think I have seen a case where you cannot go and convince. What is troublesome is retrospective repercussions. That is something startups can't do it. We don't have a graceful thing. We just shut down. We just, you know, switch back to older parts. There, that, that maturity has not come. That supporting of older models for some time, giving them a restitution, it's very quick fire. And that causes a lot of problems for that. But overnight, your, your, if you shift policies without having a heart, there's no transition time given. Like, for example, you know, I think we are far less regulated than the US for many things. Let's take an example of medical data. I was having a meeting in this morning. The US stipulates a change in the fields you have to capture much more rigidly than the Indian government does, for example. But whenever they give a change, they actually give you the option and you have to give a, you have to give a uh, undertaking that you're not going to reprint old forms, but you are allowed to finish all your old forms. So they have a graceful support for backward compatibility. Somewhere our policy decisions are very impromptu switches. That's the maturity we have to get because you have to understand people's livelihood depend on this, people dependence on it, right? Like think of the first few days of COVID. Till they defined that your Zomatos and Swiggies and Dunzos were actually in exempt, there was complete confusion and complete breakdown of supply chain. Did that serve anyone's purpose? It didn't. It completely created chaos. So somewhere giving fast decisions is important, but fast and competent and fast and coherent have to be the demands. We have to put it in. Yes, we will always have a tolerance for 10, 15% exceptions, but you can't have a 60% exception scene, which you immediately have to change. That, that shows bad on the maturity of how well we understand industry. And by the way, I don't believe it's only about impact sector. I think it's every sector. Impact gets impacted most because it also tries things which are in your areas most. That's all. So one thing that is necessary for the impact is somewhere we have to create a, a consensus body. Call it any word you like, lobbying or whatever. Somewhere we have to have something which is different from the NASCOMs, different from the ASOCHAMs. It is a different sector. Cannot be the NGOs either because these are for profit. So somewhere, again, we are maturing, we'll get there. It's happening. We are now at least talking to each other. We are sharing notes. We are sharing marketing tools. It's going to happen. Got it, this, this makes sense. Uh, look, one of the things which you mentioned is that uh, in terms of maturity also from the side of the innovators is that they don't stick to doing something for really long and they kind of either shut it down or pivot. Um, and then that's what I want to know that do you think that uh, and it could be because of sometimes due to the shareholders slash investors pressure uh, yeah. or it could be personal reasons or whatever but do you think that um, it's very difficult to stay committed to uh, something especially when you're working on the impact sector and then or you're working for impact uh, could be multiple reasons but do you think I don't think so I'll tell you what I think. And this is where a little bit of patience is important. Um, the amount of money you can get is more or less proportional to the amount of interferences you will get. And here, who you take money from, how long time aligned that person is, that becomes much more important. Now, to make sure that you have the right to choose the right set of investors, you have to think frugal. 
you cannot get into a competition and say that oh they are doing it for just this class they are only serving 30000 people and look at the valuation i am serving 3 lakh people basically i am doing the same thing technologically and i am not getting valuation i think that peer pressure that competition is what comes us you have to understand that you are going with certain parts so the way i explain it to my guys who come and work with me my entrepreneurs is there is an exponential curve and there is a sigmoid graph impact is always sigmoid it goes very slow at the beginning much slower than exponential curve but when it inflects it can actually beat the exponential curve i think that maturity and that long term has to come so two things many people think technology first and they get into impact sector because it's a fashion they don't think of serving the actual people their motives are misdiverted they are the ones who get most frustrated and so i built such a good technology it was needed by them who guarantees that whereas a real impact guy who is having it he thinks long term he has a what we call jit he has a kunnas i am going to solve this problem he doesn't think of technology those are the guys who last and you 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 know backtrack and check impact sector ceos and and, and you know and, and founders age is not a factor it was a patient it was the background of the guy how much empathy he had for the solution you will see very experienced people who are almost guilty are the ones who are coming into impact sector from the non affected fields but the young guys who are succeeding are the ones who have come from families or target audiences who has faced the problem they are doing it for a very different heart so what i'm trying to say is it is not something you can measure in that part if you have the right heart if you have the right mission just like i told about the techies their stakeholders so what are investors i mean i know so many investors who have not only given money they have also given tech so many investors who have given other assets like use my thing for a gora um, i will take care of the uh, costs okay now yeah one thing i must tell you policies policies is yes, how do you forget many of this impact sector startups need to work with the government the way the government works despite all the uh, part of it practically is through rfps the qualifying criteria of it the finance the cash flow problems are very difficult so just like there is venture debt especially for impact sector there should be a working capital venture that's what is killing most innovations from going to market somewhere that class of i don't know what to call it it's a debt it's a working capital it's a deployment maybe venture working capital debt it at least clarify that has to be created because if you are in these sectors then you, if you are in a main sector and you are creating an impactful solution you go and piggy back right any of them for example i can still make, let's say for example that we take uh, misho correct someone creates a very good impactful way by which an illiterate person can just do a google goggles kind of a thing and say this is what i buy who can supply me this sometimes i don't know how to phrase a question to query that's an impactful solution in a non core area of impact correct those things can should still get funded by the private part but if you look at the core sectors of which are actually citizenship oriented or, or social services or, or services which is social response will not social services bad word there i think the government has to think how do they absorb innovation how do they take care of this part how do they fund it cash flows are big imagine a startup not getting paid for 7 months why because the election has happened and the older government is gone new government is going slow i mean are these problems startup should suffer we have rules for everything we have supposedly schemes for everything no implementation i think that's what the government needs to focus on got it got it uh, so pian you you spoke in quite length and you covered two of the things i want to talk about one is from the builder side I mean, people who want to kind of build, focus on technology rather than the problem, and I feel most of it is applicable to in general startup ecosystem, irrespective Absolutely. of whether it's for impact Absolutely. or not, right? Yeah. Solving for problem rather than just building a cool technology. Right. Uh, 
I mean, this conversation will remain incomplete without talking about the Web three uh, world Absolutely, and what's yeah. happening yeah. Uh, yeah. with right with the whole decentralization and and the whole power, you know, giving power to the people and and uh, not just controlling uh, with few people. So, what do you think uh, is the role Web three can play in in terms of technology for impact? Uh, yeah. Where do you see it kind of playing a very uh, constructive role? So I think Web3 has to be communicated very well. Web3 is not metaverse. Web3, uh, uh, I think that's the part that has to be cleared first. The key aspect, especially in impact sector of Web3 is a single point. Who owns the data? Your data is your ownership. You have the right to not let others use it for ungainly gains. I think that to me is the core enforcement of Web3. Everything else is the top of web one and web two being repackaged as a standard stack. That happens with any evolution. I guess the fundamental part that web three is trying to work on is this ownership of data clarity. And that's the reason there's a lot of subvertence happening from the settled players in trying to underplay that aspect. Correct? Another aspect of web three, which is, which is perfectly in conjunction with our stated policies not implemented is by 2017, latest, actually by 2015, India's government work was supposed to be fully on open source. I don't know the data. I'm sure there can be some compliance data fished out, but in practical purposes, I think only 2% or maximum 5% of any government solution is not open source. I mean, you go to a government office, you don't see Linux machines. That's a fact. And that's the first part of it, right? Now, this is where Web3 becomes a huge enabler. If you have forgotten, you have not been able to get onto the bandwagon, you have not been able to implement it, implement Web3 strategies, implement Web3 rules. Correct? And the government has done it. For example, all financial data, all transaction data has to reside on Indian soil. We need those sort of rules. It will force a lot of the closed systems to be open. Otherwise, they lose the project. So the intentions will either be ship up or ship out. And it's very important as a national policy to give that. The impact policy, mass market, national security, these are very interwoven. Correct? Imagine an Aadhaar running with a private company. Yeah, they can build faster, better technology, but would you want it? In fact, imagine I, I also find it that if it's not open source, if the source code is not shared, any government thing, be it my health records or not, how do I know who has right to open my data? Where is the clarity? Take a simple instance. You get SMSs from your bank. What is the policy of security about your SMS data with the SMS provider? He can mine you and he will know more about you than you yourself know. Where are the policies about those? I think Web3 pushes us to make those clarities clear. It will play a big role. Everyone should play by the rules. The government should come out and say, in nine months, 12 months, everyone has to Web3 compliant. Otherwise, we are not going to have a role in the play. Trust me, Web3 innovation will happen like no one's business. It, it, it will, I think. I, I am on that side of the things. Uh, cool. Just then the last bit about uh, you know people who have been able to recently build legacies um, in the tech for impact sector. And I wanted to understand from you that is there a pattern that people who have been previously, you know, who have been successful or contented with their journeys uh, or have exited are able to build better legacies when it comes to and able to motivate more people to work around when it comes to technology for impact. Uh, you know, look at you yourself. Uh, and it could be because of the journey as well, right? Uh, it could be because like how you see your journey at Just Dial was that democratizing that part of for SMBs, uh, yeah. giving them power that now they can reach out to people. Or another example is Makin, right? What Makin is doing with Uddham. I'm using uh, I'm stuff. Yeah, I know. Correct, right? So, um, so is there a pattern? I mean, look at the other way around also. We were a peer group of at least 1,200, 1,300 people. It was a small community. But why are only we will take two names? The reason is that choices we make as people fundamentally don't change. 
but our legacies help us to have more staying power. And in this field, it's more true. It's true for most startups to be outstanding, you have to be outlasting. That mental makeup and a little bit of the financial muscle does help, undoubtedly. Okay, I always look at the guy's responsibilities when recruiting him, even if he's gung-ho, that I want to work in this sector because I know it will not be sustainable for him. So somewhere it is, it is a question of what is success to you? It's very philosophical, I know. It's a bit vague, but I think it roots down to that. How is your lifestyle? This is a harder part. In fact, you know, I, I know that most of the people who are in it probably have a little bit of a retirement plan, which is very frugal, and they want to put back whatever excess they come out of it back into making sure things are more impactful. That is a mindset which probably is that whether it's a 20-year-old kid or a 50-year-old stupid guy like me or a 70-year-old guy of a MNC and a director and that, this is a common thread I have seen. Somewhere it is, whether you call it guilt, sense of responsibility, uh, a, a feeling of negatively feeling about entitlement, knowing that you got some things which many others deserve but they didn't get. It's a sense of all these things which really motivates you to go to this entire sector. That's a common thread. I think when you talk to Mekin, for example, look at him. He, he's even gone one level much deeper than even I'm scared to go, right? He's great. He has gone and created a skill training thing where there was no business model. He's making it as it goes along, but that didn't stop him from going and solving the problem. That's pure passion, boss. I, I don't have any other word. I don't think those patterns emerge, but I did say that the financial stability does help. But financial stability is a little bit of a misnomer, right? Your standard of living is the secret to your financial stability. So somewhere there is a there's a there's a balance between these two aspects. Well, fair enough. I think uh, yeah, that last question kind of sums it up quite well. That passion, of course, is something which is going to drive and. Uh, and the rest of the things are quite subjective is what I feel personally. Yeah, I, I think in summary, I must tell you this, that um, let's put it this way, that this is something very nice and I'll quote one of my friends and I'll sort of extrapolate on that part. So I have a friend called Suman who says a very nice thing that good entrepreneurs find out the gap in the market. Great entrepreneurs find out the market in the gap. Impact entrepreneurs would fill any gap they see, which can create people's life to be better, whether there's a market or not. They somehow will find a way to make a market or find some other means to do it. Most of them are Robin Hoods also. They're probably doing two, three things. One part of it is sort of creating a fund flow for the other part. I think that's what the people do when their ambitions are more than their bank balances. And that's fine. That's that's beautiful uh, summary. Thanks uh, so much, Sandeepan, for your time and for this summary and for this conversation. I hope you had a good time having this conversation. Always, I always, always. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you get a chance to sort of have a lot of bunch of youngsters who are thinking to get into impact or not, and you want to put me on the firing line of them, I'd be much happier. <laughs> All right. So oh, we'll do it. Just so, All right. Thanks again uh, for Thank your you time, so Sandeepan. Thanks so much. And... Uh, uh, yeah, this was uh, Sandeepan Chattopadhyay, guys, uh, Zelpmog founder, previously CTO of JustStyle. And we were talking about technology for impact. We'll be back with another, another episode of Masters of Code. Till then, thanks so much. Thank you.